Hello everybody. Welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Aira and today I'm doing something nighttime themed Ooh. and string themed. Ooh. String. But in all seriousness, I am super excited about today's video. I am doing a collab with Kat from Real Life Dollhouse Miniatures. I have watched her channel for a long time now, and one of my favorite things about her channel is how she takes everyday items that you can find around the house and she makes it into something amazingly miniature. One of my favorite videos that she's made, she takes aluminum foil and turns it into amazing dollhouse plants. I will put that link in the description. I will title it my favorite video from Real Life Dollhouse Miniatures. And her ingenuity was one of the things that inspired this collab today. The idea we came up with was to challenge each other with a household item plus a challenge word. I sent her a challenge and she also sent one to me. And the video you're going to see today is what I make based off the words she sent me. At the end of the video, I will tell you what words I sent to her, and then make sure you go over to her channel and check out her video. So in case you didn't guess from the intro, my household item is string. And I used two different kinds of string. This is just one kind. And my challenge word was nighttime. I went through a lot of thoughts when I was thinking out what I was going to do, and the first thought was a dream catcher, but because I was doing this collab with Chat, I wanted to do something really special, and I wanted to do what she does a lot of the time, which is take something and turn it into something completely new. So if I had done a dream catcher, the string would have been used to be string in the dream catcher. So I wanted to do something where I made it into a completely new material. So what you'll see in this video is how I turned string into this. To start creating the chain link fence, I grabbed some craft sticks that are about a quarter inch wide. I laid each one at a 45 degree angle on my cutting mat and then made vertical marks at each quarter inch mark. This is to help when I do a winding motion to create each chain link piece to keep evenly spaced. I made a few of these to make the process go a little bit faster and then I took some packing tape and I used this to cover the sticks so when I do the gluing process the glue does not stick to the wood. Now I'm going to take my string. This is just string I had around the house. I wanted to make sure and stay true to the project description and use a household item. And so I started at the top. I used a little bit more of that tape that I had to tape the string piece to the top. And then I used some wood glue. I don't think it matters what brand you use. This is just the brand that I have. I put it on my fingers and then I ran it down the length of the string and I made sure that I got the string completely soaked in the glue. Once that was done, I could start winding it. This is where the markings help. This way I'll know that each individual chain link piece is even and will go together easily. This is quite a messy process, so if you are thinking about trying this out, you may want to get gloves. Personally, I don't mind my hands getting a little bit messy, so it didn't bother me, but it is kind of a mess. Once you get to the end, the string should be sticking to the stick, so you don't really have to tie it off. But then I just put it into something that could hold it while it dried. You can use any clamping type mechanism. So in each round I did this, I made three or four of these, and once it was dried enough, I just started winding it, pulling it away from the plastic that's covering the wood, and it came off fairly easily. I was pretty happy with how that worked. And then once I got it off, as you can see, I'm just trying to line it back up with the lines, making sure that I do not deform it. These pieces are pretty delicate, so I'm just making sure that I'm very careful. They get stronger once you start putting them together, but when they are individual pieces, they are pretty weak. 
Once I have at least two pieces, I can start winding them together to get them to fit together like a chain link fence. I did a lot of research on how chain link fences are actually made so that this could look as accurate as possible and their individual squiggly pieces like the pieces we just made and they're wound together and usually they're held together by tension but mine need a little bit of help so each point where the chain link fence meets another piece I need to make sure that I glue it because it does not have the same weight that a metal chain link fence does. So once I have two pieces that are wound together and they're making this diamond shape I'm going to take another piece and spiral it through the back of the first hole, wind it around, and then put it through the back of the hole again. Basically a chain link fence is just pieces spiraled together over and over again. And I've inserted a movie so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. It's kind of like a spiral notebook except there's no paper. It's just the spirals spiraled together over and over again. So if you're thinking, wow, this sounds like a really long lengthy process just to get a chain link fence, you're right. It is a really long lengthy process just to get a chain link fence. But honestly, I think in the end, I really like the result. So um, if you're all for an authentic look, it may be worth it. So once you've spiraled in each piece, again, you wanna go back in with glue to make sure those pieces are holding together. It took me about five pieces to get one inch of chain link fence. And so here you can see me spiraling it all the way through. And here's the live motion or the live action speed which is pretty slow but um, honestly I just put on a good movie and just started spiraling it through it's a little bit like uh, trying to knit spaghetti noodles <laughs> if you can imagine that but in the end this is what I got this is about six inches of chain link fence and you can see it does have the same 3d effect that a chain link fence has it's not completely flat which is what I was going for now I need to even up the ends, so I'm putting it onto my cutting mat to make sure that I'm getting as even a cut as possible, and I'm marking where I'm going to cut with the scissors. It cuts very easily with the scissors, and I just went through and cut on each mark, and I did this for both sides of the chain link fence until I had a rectangular piece. Now I'm taking the thinnest craft wood that I could find and I'm weaving it into each side of the chain link fence and this is going to help me connect the fence parts to the actual structure that I am going to be building. And now I need to make a base of course so that my fence can stand up. So I'm just drawing out on some cardstock how big I want it to be. I'm taking some aluminum foil and squishing it into the shape. This will help me save on paper clay. My one concern was making it flat enough so that the chain link fence didn't buckle on top of this piece. So to help that I took a pencil and where I wanted the fence to go across the piece I pushed in a straight line so I knew there would be a gap for it. And now I'm taking some glue, I put it all over the aluminum foil, and I'm using the creative paper clay that I had from a previous project, and I'm just going to coat the entire aluminum foil with the paper clay. There's not a specific technique to this, I just covered the aluminum foil. And then I took my pencil again and made sure that that gap was still as straight as possible to make room for my fence. Now I'm taking a larger dowel and I'm poking holes at the end of where my fence will be and I'm making sure that that hole goes through the aluminum foil. Once my paper clay is dry, I'm just going to cut out the base and then I'm going to use tacky glue to glue two dowel rods in place to begin making the structure that will hold up my chain link fence. And while these were drying, I kept making sure that they were as vertical as possible. Now I'm taking a thin piece of paper and I'm just wrapping it around and gluing it onto the dowel rod that I just glued in place. I'm going to do this on both of the vertical dowel rods and what I'm doing is basically creating a shelf that I can glue the top brace onto. I need a wood brace that goes in between the vertical pieces to keep the chain link fence, since it's kind of stretchy, I need to keep it from buckling my two dowel rods. So now you can see I have the 
the uh, shelf piece on both of my dowel rods and I'm gluing in the top brace to keep my chain link fence supports nice and even. And then I'm just going to take my wood cutter and I'm going to cut off the top of the dowel rods that I do not need. And what I have there is my brace for my chain link fence. Now I'm taking some smaller pieces of cardstock. They're probably about an inch long and I'm going to put them on three sides. These are attaching to that really thin piece that I weaved into the chain link fence and I'm going to do three on each side and this is what's going to connect my chain link fence piece to my structure piece that I just built. So I'm going to add glue and then wrap the thin piece of cardstock around the dowel rod. And I'm going to hold this in place until the glue takes hold and this is going to hold my chain link fence to the structure piece. I should have six of these in total, three on each side, and I know that that will keep it standing up really nicely. Here's what it looks like when all those pieces are done. Now it's time to make this thing look like metal. So my first coat of paint is going to be a matte dark gray, and I'm going to carefully, carefully paint this. I want to cover all of the wood glue color, all of the paper, all of the wood, and I just wanna make sure I do a really, really good coat of this paint. Next, I'm using a metallic silver paint, and this doesn't have to be as good of a coat. I'm just kind of going over the surfaces of each part, and that's what the light is going to hit, so that is what's going to shine and make the piece look like metal. Now I'm taking a dark brown paint and I'm going to be putting a coat of that onto my base piece because I do want the area around this fence to look rather muddy and maybe like deserty. And I'm taking also a little bit of that brown and putting it here and there on the fence, making sure that I don't overdo it because it's going to make the fence look like it's rusted in a few spots. I'm going to be using some sand and some little pebbles and putting that throughout to give it more of that deserty look I was talking about. And now I'm using a different kind of string. This is a thicker string, but it has more strands in it. And so I thought I could make some little deserty looking plants. And the way I did this is I took a needle and I separated the strands. And then I took some green paint and then I painted the strands against my finger, as you can see. And once they were painted, I re-separated them with a needle so that I had this wispy looking green plant. Then I took the end of it, stuck it into some tacky glue, and then I glued it onto my base. I did this here and there around the base so that I had a spread out wispy grass deserty look, I think. <laughs> And of course, you know me, I can't leave things looking nice, bright, and new, not even rocks or sand. So I did a coat of watered down brown paint all over the base. The next thing I wanted to do was some barbed wire. So the way I did this is I took one long string and then I took a bunch of smaller, shorter cut strings and I tied it around the longer string. And then once I had it tied down, I cut the ends shorter to look like the barbs on barbed wire. And the process for this is very similar to the way that I made the individual links for the chain link fence. I had a piece that I was going to wrap it around. This is just a peg from a peg toy and I covered it so that it wouldn't stick to it. And then I took wood glue and covered the barbed wire string completely with wood glue and then wrapped it around the peg toy to dry. Once it was completely wrapped around, I took my needle and just made sure that all of my little barbs were sticking straight out and looking as menacing as possible. Then I took it off the peg toy carefully, 
getting it free from the wrap and then I placed it on top of my fence to see how it looked and I started gluing it in place. This is some more wood glue and I would just hold it in place until it took hold and I just went slowly down the top of the fence getting my barbed wire in its spot. Once it was glued on, I clipped off any extras and then it was ready for a coat of paint. I did this one the same as I did the chain link fence, except I did a base coat of black and that made this metal look just a little bit darker. So now it's time to give this guy his nighttime theme. I am cutting open the fence to make it look like there was either a prison break or a break in. I was really surprised that I could bend and move this fence much like I would imagine I could if it was metal. It would fold back and curve just like I wanted it to and I didn't really have to do a lot to make it stay in place. I also made this little wire cutter set out of paper and q-tips and I wanted him off to the side just to give a little bit more to the story of this piece. And of course I needed some signs. We have a no trespassing keep out sign and I'm just going to stick him straight onto the fence and of course another sign in case you missed it the first time with a skull and crossbones to make this even more menacing. So that's it guys, this is my nighttime string miniature. Let me know what you think in the comments. What would you made for string and nighttime? I don't know where this came from. Maybe I was watching some sort of prison movie at the time, I don't remember. But anyway, I really enjoyed this and I'm glad I could share it with you today. As promised, I'm going to tell you the words I sent to Kat. I gave her the household item of bottle cap and the challenge word of music. So make sure you follow the link in the description to her video. There will also be a link in the description to her channel, to my favorite video of hers. Make sure you check them all out. Go subscribe to Kat. She does amazing things. And thank you so much, Kat, for doing this collab with me. I had a lot of fun. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.